Okay, so the question is on um, how to, uh, how can you sort of transcend uh, negative, being sensitive to negative and positive energies, and what if you feel like you want to save, look after people? Um, the thing with being a human, and the Course in Miracles talks about this, it talks about the collective, the collective unconscious, or the collective insanity, or we all, as being humans, have collective belief systems which we all program each other with. And one of the belief systems is, like, people with negative energy can negatively affect me, like they drain me. Or, uh, and another one is like, oh, it's nice to be around that person, you, you, because you're, you're full of positive energy. Um, and uh, the, the thing with that is those are belief systems. So when you have an ego, when you have repressed feelings and all the myriads of beliefs, and a lot of these beliefs are just collective beliefs that nearly all humans have, like, oh, you've got bad energy, you've got good energy, I, like, I, I feel drained around you, I feel good around you. Actually, in truth, none of that exists. When, you, when, when, the, when the experience of separation is finally transcended into enlightenment, there is no such thing as someone having good energy or bad energy, because there is no other. And also, you're connected to the universe, the infinite energy. Um, and I was, at, I was, you know, someone was mentioning, well, can someone with negative energy affect you? If you're, if you're in the, if you're in the, if you're enlightened, you're in the, you're, you're in, you're in the infinite. So, can something that has got a negative energy affect something that's in the infinite energy? No, it can't, because, you know, like if you're, um, let's, here you've got to understand that um, only love, in truth, only love is real. Only the qualities of God are real in the universe, you know, love and light. So what, what about darkness and evil and all of that stuff? Well, you know, that actually can only exist with the absence of God, right? So it's like, is there such a thing as darkness? No. If you put the light on in a room, Darkness is the absence of light. I, I don't know if this is making sense. Like if, if, you know, if the truth is the sun, and the sun is at infinite power, then ha is darkness real? Well, darkness is just the absence of sun. Does that make sense? Really, there is only infinite power. But when there's a lack of light, then it seems like there's an opposite to the... Um, uh, to the uh, uh, and that's, that is the... So darkness is not more stronger than light, even though it seems to be in this realm. So obviously, if you're, if you're connected to infinite light, someone being dark, uh, you know, this may come across in a bit, a bit of a weird way, and it's a bit more complicated than that, but when you're connected to infinite light, for sure, you know, someone who's negative will not affect you because you're connected to an infinite source of light. So they have less power than someone who's transcended everything. So, so to do that, you know, you have belief systems, like, you know, and really what you're talking about, can, would God be affected if you're connected to the infinite size, in, infinite light and love and power of God, which is, how much power is that God? Infinite power. How much light is in God? Infinite light. Um, how much experience of separation? There isn't any. It's infinite. So when you're one with that, um, can that be affected by anything in the world? Well, obviously not. So, the, so why are you affected? Well, the ego is holding belief systems that it's in separation and can be affected by good and bad energies. And while you're an ego, that, you, know, you can hold belief systems which will affect you. You know, this person's got bad energy, this person's got good energy. So one of the things I do to try, you know, when you're, the higher up you go, you become more intuitive, but you're in a place of constant constant happiness and peace and oneness. So you go into the oneness and, you, and, you have, and you're directed, you spontaneously, either things spontaneously happen or the, intuitively they happen. But it's not like, you know, you don't get things like, when you're, when you're connected to the source, when you're in infinite light, when you're infinitely happy, can someone make you more happy? No. And when you're in the infinite light, can darkness of someone who's negative you know, have an effect on you? No. So only while you're a separated ego, and you believe you're in separation, you experience yourself separated, others, 
you know, some people can. It's true. Some people seem to be more positive than you because you're you're in a you're in a, a low energy place, and some people seem to drain you. But that only can happen once. So cancel the ideas if you wanted to transcend it. Then I would just cancel the belief that uh, negative people drain me. You know, I cancel my belief negative people can drain me. I'm infinite being. I place my belief that other people can drain my energy into God's infinite light and love. I pray for a miracle to see people differently who drain me. And you just, you're just asking God to release that idea that there is such a thing as people that can drain me. I'd also even release, you know, when you're, um, when you're going for enlightenment, you're trying to transcend everything in this world. Because you don't want to be like, you know, like people in the ego want to run away from pain and they want to go towards pleasure. You know, like if someone said free donuts next door, I'd probably be next door. And if someone said there's an axe murderer, uh, you know, in the next room, I probably wouldn't want to go there because I want to run away from the axe murderer and want to go where the free donuts are. But actually, I don't want to be pulled by, you know, by, by my ego because everything I can get when, I'm, when my ego's out of the way, then I have a constant connection to the source. So I would also transcend, you know, that, oh, like, uh, this person is, makes me happy all the time, so I only feel happy when I'm with that person. A little bit like, you know, if you go into some fellowships, they call that love addiction or some, something like that, you know. I only feel happy when this person's in the room, and I feel terrible when, when that person's in the room. So you want to cancel those beliefs. I'd feel out, you know, if you feel drained, sit with those feelings, feel it out, cancel it, pray for a miracle to see it differently. And, and refute it. You know, when you cancel a belief, you're just refuting. It's like when I'm one with God, when I'm in the infinite presence of God, like, does God, you know, is there such a thing as a person that can make me more happy? It doesn't exist. Is there a person that can drain infinite love and light when you're, when you're that? That's ridiculous. So, but while you're in the collective, those ideas exist. So you just let those, you just, uh, you just know that. So, you know, when you're connected to the source, you don't have to go to a person to feel happy. When you're connected to the source, you don't have to be frightened that someone who's got negative energy is going to drain you. But if you believe that, and you and probably do, because we all do, because we're all part of the collective, and we all say to each other, oh, you avoid, avoid John, he's got bad energy, and oh, it's really good to be with, with Simon, because he's got the best energy of all the, all the friends we know. So you just, you just cancel those ideas. Yeah? And what about when you um, actually don't mesh with their energy, but you realize that, that they are suffering, and you're like, oh, I Oh, yes, thank you. I, yeah, thank I you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see, uh, I come from an act addict background, which means that there is a tendency in me to want to rescue people and want to be rescued by people. Um, and that, that can come from my ego, you know, like, oh, you know, let me, it's like, it's like when it comes from the ego, there's like an urge, uh, and I guess it's, it's, it's hard to say, it's an ego urge, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to be so much fun fixing you, you know, and I'm going to tell you what to do, and you're going to follow everything I do, and it's going to be so much fun for me to fix you, or, you know, or I'm dysfunctional, uh, you look like someone who can fix me, so I'm just going to hang around you, and, yeah, and I'm going to feel so good because you're going to fix my life. So there's this, 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 um, and that comes out of a, a an experience of separation, where you're trying to get a fix out of either fixing someone, or, or being fixed by someone. Now, ultimately, when you get when you get when you get your connection to source, when you uh, or when you're enlightened. There is no such thing as a need which comes out of an experience of separation to, um, to fix someone or not. Also, I mean, I, I think what Buddha says is quite interesting. You know, in enlightenment, there are no attachments, which would mean there'd be no attachment to outcome. So, you know, like when I become, uh, if I was to get into a relation, what, I, what the Course calls a special relationship, you know, Oh, I've got I've got this special relationship where I'm going to fix you, and I've got all these projections that I'm going to feel so good once you're fixed. Well, you can see immediately that's an ego thing, 
because I'm already, my ego is wanting an outcome from you. And also, if there's this urge to fix you, well, that's like, you could say, as you get to the high levels of consciousness, whether you get fixed, whether I say something or not, doesn't matter. You know, because you're, you're just coming out of the source, so it's non-attached. You know, in, in things like dependency, codependency, love addiction, there's like, as soon as the person's not doing what you're doing, or they're supposed to be doing, then there's pain, you know, because you're, you're fixated on an outcome or getting a fix or a hit. So when you're connected to the source and you're just at peace and at love and in the oneness and you say something that's helpful to another person, it, it's done without expectation or outcome, you know, and if you never see the person or if they come back and they get fixed, in, in a way, it's irrelevant whether they get fixed or not, because you're just being what you are, coming out of grace. And sometimes the right words and the right things, and they go, they're receptive and they get well, and that's great. But it's not a personal great, it's just what's witnessed to be happened, that you spoke a few words and they're receptive and they got well. Or you spoke a few words and they died the next day. <laughs> you know, like, I think you need to go to this place and do this work. And then you later find out that, you know, they're found dead, you know. But you, don't, you wouldn't take that personally because you're just being an instrument, you know. You're being what you are. But there's, the ego is not attached to... You're just being the, the source of light and love. Oh, thank you. So there's that. So you want to be, like, coming out of love and light. But as soon as the ego is getting a motive or wanting to get a fix or wanting to get an outcome of, of that, then you know you're... For me, it's, if I was trying to help someone and then I, I felt my ego was getting involved, like, oh, I feel bad because this person wasn't following my advice or, or, or they looked like they didn't like what I said, and I know my ego's getting involved, and I have to clear that, because it's like it doesn't matter. You know, I'm just being what I am. I'm just trying to be a clear channel. And whatever happens, that is the unfolding of, of, of the universe, if you like. It's not for a personal attachment for me to fix them or not. So you always want to be like, when you're getting to enlightenment, it's like whatever happens in the world, you don't, you don't want it to be a thing that um, affects your ego. You want to be like free with whatever happens. You want to be who you are. You want to be an instrument, but not, not someone trying to make outcomes and expectations and get fixes and see and get rewards out of things going your way, because that can only be an ego thing. Because you, when you're in the, when you're in, you're just in the present moment, and whatever happens, and then the next present moment, you're in the next present moment, and the next present, but there isn't an ego there trying to get a fix out of things going, going its way. It's different. You're just fresh in every moment, and what words come out of you, and what things happen, and whatever outcomes happen, there's nothing there trying to hook into them and get something from the future or the past. Yep? Yeah?